Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. We are adding content to CheapControls.com so you can download some extra documents used in this video. Consider joining the new Cheap Controls group on Facebook so you can stay in better contact with us. In this video I'm going to go over how to change the page on the Nexion display using an interrupt on the Arduino. This way we should get rid of the page flashing portion of it. The way we left it was every five seconds it would check the status of a switch and if it was set to five volts it would go to page one. If it was set to zero volts it would go to page zero. And you can see that it flashes every five seconds. And there's the change and it will flash again. The Nexion display was set up on page 0 with this ID and the other page was page 1 with ID of 1. And if you remember we could send either page 0 or page 1 and we did a combination of the two. I'm going to go over how to change this code so that it stops the flashing every 5 seconds and only changes when we flip the switch. We won't need this val anymore. We won't need any of this code at all anymore down here. We're going to be copying it and pasting it though, so I'm going to leave it in place for now. And instead of assigning in a pin mode, we're going to use a different line here. Instead of deleting it, I'm just going to comment it for now. The reason that I chose pin 3 originally was because it could be set up as an interrupt pin in the Arduino Uno, which is the Arduino I'm using. If you were to use a different Arduino model, you'd have to check and see what pins are available to be used as interrupts. What an interrupt does is it operates outside this loop down here. You put code in this loop and it executes over and over and over. But if you want something to execute based upon an external event, like flipping the switch and causing a pin to go from low to high or high to low, you can have another function down here. And we're going to create a function called page one. And within this function, we're going to have it change the page from zero to one. And up here is the code that we send that makes it change from 0 to 1. So we're just going to cut and paste this. We're going to paste it right here. And then we're going to get rid of this else statement. And then in order to make this execute, we have to attach the interrupt to this pin up here. And you do that with the command attach interrupt. And you can see that this interrupt has to have a capital I on it. The Arduino uses camel case, so whenever a command has two words pushed together, the first word is lowercase, the second word is uppercase. If I make an error, this is usually where I make it. And then you have to define the pin as an interrupt. So you put a set of parentheses out here. And then you write digital pin to interrupt. So the pin has to be capitalized. The word pin has to be capitalized. Two has to be capitalized and interrupt. And the minute that I typed interrupt, this also turned to red. So that means I know that I've typed it in correctly. And in this case, we define the pin above as three, so we can just put that in there. And then we put the subroutine or function that we want to call. In this case, it's page one. And then we have to define, do we want to call it when the pin goes from zero to one, or zero to five? Or do we want to define it when the pin goes from five to zero, or one to zero? Or do we want it to call it whenever the pin changes, whether it goes up or down, or down or up? In this case, we only want to go to page one when it's rising. I'm going to go ahead and comment this out so we can compile this. And you'll see that we don't need any of this in here anymore. I'm compiling it and uploading it at the same time. Now in this case I already have the wire hooked. 
So even if the switch is on one right now, it's not going to make it go to page one, and we should see it stop flashing. It's not flashing anymore over here. So if it's on one and I go to zero, this won't happen. But if it's on zero and I go to one, it will happen. It will change. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the switch now. And there was no change. So, like I said, it's only going to change when it actually changes. So this time when I go to change it again, it should go to page one. And it worked. Now when I flip it back, since I've commented everything out, it's stuck. But you can see it flash as I go back to one. And since we're doing an interrupt, and it will happen whenever I do the switch, it doesn't wait for five seconds, it can do it quickly. So now we're going to go ahead and incorporate the rest of the code. We're going to take this line up here, and we're going to copy it down to here. After we've changed it to page one, then we want to change the interrupt. And we want to go to, go to a new subroutine, and we'll call it page two and we're going to change this to falling edge. So what we've done is we've changed the way the interrupt is going to act. So once it's on page one, we set it to be looking for page two or for a falling edge. And we can take this whole subroutine and copy it, or function. Some people call it a function, some people call it a subroutine. We'll call this page two. But remember, we want to go to page zero, and we could put a, we can put the number zero here, or we can type in zero. It doesn't matter. But we need to go down here and change this because once we go to page two, then we want it to be set to be looking for page one again, and we want to change it to a rising edge. And I misspelled this. You can see that this changed to blue, and this did not because I put failing instead of falling. So now we should be all set. So the first time through, it's going to go to page one. The second time, then after it goes to page one, it's going to reset this to be looking for the next flip of the switch, and then it's going to go to page two. And it should be able to toggle back and forth as fast as we can flip the switch, and we shouldn't see any flashing on the display. I'm going to delete all of this code up through here just to clean it up a little bit. That way, if I use this code for the next video, it'll start um, clean. Okay, we'll go ahead and upload it now. I'm going to change this back to zero. Okay, it's done uploading. We'll go ahead and flip the switch. You can see it goes to one, goes back to zero, and go as fast as I can flip the switch. This is a way to do this so that you don't have the flashing of the screen. It can act instantaneously. You are required to have a pin dedicated to an interrupt pin. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to do this without using an interrupt, but just by storing some values. I prefer the interrupt because you usually don't use pins for interrupt, so the pins are available, and it's really not that complicated. Then in the following video to that, we're going to use something called feedback, and that's where we'll get information from the display so that in this case, if I change this to zero, or back to one now, and I flip the switch, you're going to see it's already on one, but it flashed. It'd be nice for the Arduino to know that you push the button on the screen. So and that's two videos away. So I hope you stay tuned. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.